In this Debaco University video, we're going to give you a brief overview of how to identify and control Cercospora in cannabis plants. So Cercospora is not unique just to cannabis, but this is kind of what it looks like uh, in cannabis. And on a microscopic view, this kind of looks like this long, straight little like thread almost or worm looking like thing. So first off, how do you go about properly identifying it in cannabis plants? Well, it starts as kind of small yellow flecks developing into lesions, which turn into light tan or white with yellow halos. And in severe cases, it develops chlorosis, leading to defoliation, as we see down here. The infection begins on older leaves and moves through the canopy from there. General conditions of the fungi is that the pathogen survives mainly in plant debris as desiccated resistant pseudomonia, uh, but can also survive as canidia in debris or seeds. So it's multiple regions where it can hide. When moisture is sufficient, new canidia are formed and spread via rain splash or wind to, to new leaves or plants, and that's how it's spreading. Optimum conditions are 77 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit with nighttime temperatures above 61 degrees Fahrenheit and a relative humidity of 90 to 95%. Infection is greatly reduced or non-existent at temperatures less than 59 degrees Fahrenheit or during periods of leaf wetness that are less than 11 hours. So if you're looking at kind of beating back the disease and you have control over conditions, while not great for growing the plant, below 59 can really um, reduce or really eliminate its chance of spreading. So what about the life cycle? As with any disease, good to understand the general life cycle. And we can see those kind of finger-like thread-like uh, protrusions there um, that are the um, leading to the canidia, which is the primary inoculum. Here we have our healthy plants. We can have our leaf spots. We can have secondary inoculum kind of infecting that way. We can have infective plants that then lead to infected debris and the stroma surviving in infective plant debris and soil where it res resides. And then the um, stroma producing uh, spores can then go through and cause that primary infection and repeat that life cycle. Here we see the same thing where we have our disease develops as the leaves appear as leathery, dark, kind of bronzy colorations. We have the disease can cause a defoliation. Those leaves fall to the ground and that's where the fungus will survive. This is particularly looking in soybeans, but the same basic process occurs in cannabis. Wind or rain can spread spores to young plants, and then the fungal toxin and sunlight interact, causing the petiole foliar symptoms, as we see here, and I'll repeat the cycle again. Now, how do we manage this? And this is showing it in some other uh, plants as well. But identifying and developing resistant varieties will be important going forward. Three-year rotation in outdoor fields that have had a positive identification of the fungus. Avoid planting sugar beets near cannabis because they definitely are more prone to this and that could potentially cause an increase in the local pressure. So be mindful of what it is, what it looks like, how to identify it. Uh, may not have be able to identify it in the microscopic level, but hopefully these descriptions as well as macroscopic pictures provide you with a little bit of understanding and you can kind of hopefully not plant sugar beets near the area, rotate if you can, and try as a way of methods of of management to mitigate the negative impacts Sir Cospera can have on your cannabis plants.